Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Ning. I'm gonna present some test cases for wind farm layout optimization. Just briefly introduce myself. I did a, a PhD at Stanford University in the aeronautics and astronautics department. I worked under Elon Crow in the aircraft design group, did various studies in aircraft design and specifically focused on formation flying. I was then a postdoc and later a senior engineer at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory uh, where I transitioned a bit towards wind energy and worked on wind turbine optimization. And since 2014, I've been at Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah, working on a combination of aircraft design and wind energy design uh, with a focus on the aerodynamics and optimization. Uh, the case studies I'm gonna present have multiple collaborators, Nick Baker, Jared Thomas, and PJ Stanley. Um, Nick's a MS student and Jared and PJ are PhD students all in my research lab. Catherine Dykes was a senior engineer at NREL and is now a head of section at DTU in Denmark. And multiple folks as part of this IEA WINTAS 37 have contributed input and suggestions as we've shared and worked on some of these cases together. This is a, a task focused on systems engineering within wind energy. Um, if you're interested in uh, and the cases I'm going to show are a small part of a, a bigger effort in doing systems engineering work in wind energy. If this is something that's of interest to you, you might participate in our annual meeting uh, that will be held virtually in June. And Catherine's email there is there on the bottom if you'd like more details on that. So before I get into the case studies, just give a brief introduction to wind farm layout optimization for those of you who are unfamiliar. Uh, here we're looking at like a, a representation of a top view of a wind farm. So each of those black lines is a top view of the rotor disc of a wind turbine. So the blades would be spinning in and out of the page here. And the wind turbine is going to, is designed to extract energy from the wind. Uh, and in doing so, it's gonna leave behind a wake. So as pictured here, the wind would be coming in the bottom left corner here. And each turbine leaves a wake behind. That wake has slower moving air so another turbine that's positioned in one of these waked regions, it's gonna have less power available to it because of the slower moving air. We'd like to reposition turbines so that uh, we can minimize some of those power losses. Uh, we don't have infinite space to work with, right? There are costs and other things associated with the land and distances between turbines. Um, but we'd like to try to make this work well. Uh, the problem is complicated in the sense that the wind, of course, doesn't always come from the same direction. So I may design the wind turbine to work really well for this, say, southwesterly wind. But if the wind starts coming from the west, from the north, it may be that my layout is really poor. So these um, utility scale horizontal axis wind turbines, they have a yaw system so they can reorient themselves, right? So even though uh, they, they can't reposition, but they can change the direction they face. And normally they'll face into the wind. There's research in maybe not facing quite into the wind to get better performance as a whole, but in general, we're gonna face towards the wind. Um, we will represent this uncertainty in a wind rose. This is just a standard probability density function, but instead of plotting it on one axis, we plot it in polar coordinates, just so we can see it on a compass. So. This plot would say that the wind predominantly comes out of the west and then next out of the south, but there's some, uh, pro some finite probability that could come from really any direction. And a typical objective is going to need to account for that uncertainty. A typical one would be like the expected value, right? Or in other words, the average power that I would produce given some uncertain, uh, uncertainty distribution in the wind direction. The problem is also complicated because it's highly multimodal. So in this figure, Jared uh, has taken the turbine that's in the middle. So the right picture is showing um, a depiction of the wind turbines, the little red dots are wind turbines. If you just take that center one and move it around, the left picture shows a sort of surface contour plot of um, the total power of the wind farm. So there's a big peak in the middle, somewhere in the middle. Um, and as we move that turbine in different places, there's a bunch of different peaks, lots of local optimum. And that's if we just move one turbine. As we start moving all of them, uh, we can't really visualize that super high dimensional space, but 
you can imagine this is a, a really, really high, highly multimodal design space, which makes it hard to search whether we're using gradient-based or gradient-free methods. We may also have lots of design variables. So just moving each turbine around uh, presents a lot of variables as the wind farm grows. We may also want to think about turbines that are different heights, that have uh, different sizes of blades or towers, optimized for different things like structures and costs. Um, so there can potentially be many considerations. We won't get into that in our case studies today, but just things to keep in mind. And of course, there are many other disciplines, also ones we won't consider today, such as the structural fatigue. As I move in and out of these wakes, that's gonna change the unsteady loading on the blades and affect the fatigue. And as I move them around, I've gotta think about other logistics like cabling, roads, uh, shipping lanes, things like that, um, that can incur costs and different sorts of constraints. Uh, well, let's dive into one of the case studies. So this is a case study we uh, created about a year or so ago and sent to the community. Um, uh, let's see, I'm gonna share a different screen here. I sent it out to the community to kind of get some input, um, have people try this out. Sorry, one second here. Let me switch over to, there you go. Okay, um, we sent it out to some folks uh, to have them try it. Some who uh, were practiced in wind energy and maybe not so much in optimization. Others who were practiced in optimization, not so much in wind energy. Um, just a variety of folks and, uh, and let, let them try this problem. So it's gonna be easier for me to uh, illustrate it here. So I'm gonna draw on the screen here. Uh, let's consider a 2D problem. So we won't worry about changing heights or anything. Everything is just a two-dimensional problem. And I can depict the wind turbines as just these dots here. So these are gonna be different wind turbines. Every wind turbine is gonna have two design variables associated with it. So I can change, for the ith wind turbine, I can change its position, x and y, these coordinates. And so if I've got 100 wind turbines, then I've got 200 design variables although you can parameterize it any way you want, right? That's just one way to parameterize it. You could think of them as discrete. You could uh, discreetly bend an area and think of them that way. Uh, you could use uh, different sections, things on the boundary, things on the interior. There's lots of things you could do to parameterize it. It's just one possibility. Um, but as far as constraints go in the problem, we have a circular boundary. The wind turbines are not allowed to leave uh, the boundary, and they also have to maintain a certain separation distance. So between every pair of turbines, calculate that distance and make sure they're at least two diameters apart. Um, those are the constraints. The objective is an average power. So in this case, we took that wind rose that we saw before, that uncertain distribution and direction. We discretize it into just 16 bins. And so the objective is a sum over those uh, where um, di is the probability of the wind coming from direction i and pi is the power of the wind farm for that direction. So for example, say the wind is coming from this direction, uh, we provide a wake model, right, which propagates the wakes for all the wind turbines. Based on the local velocity, it's gonna calculate the power for that whole wind farm. And so that'll give you one power and then we know the probability of that direction, and then we repeat that process for 16 different directions, and that's the objective that's gonna be used. Um, let me switch back. Well, actually, before I switch to another screen, uh, we actually did three different types of problems here. So uh, we varied in size, so there's the number of turbines, and there's also a radius and that's the boundary, right? So we did problems of 16, 36, and 64. So we wanted to see what happens as you increase the number of design variables, how scalable your methods might be. Right? And they have different radii. It's not really what imp that important for this discussion here. Uh, we'll see that in the docs in a, in a second. So I'm gonna jump over to the website so you can see where this is. Um, I'll have a, a link at the end, but I'll show you how you can find it. Um, so if we go over to uh, our GitHub repository, you go under GitHub, 
slash BYU Flow Lab. Um, and I'm going to search for IEA. Okay, I've got these case studies here. There are two sets. We're going to look at one and two. So here's case studies one and two. Um, two is not as relevant for today's discussion. This is more about looking at different physics models for the wake. But for the optimization, we'll look at case study one. There's a PDF document here that kind of describes uh, all the details. There's this objective we're just discussing, uh, a possible choice for design variables, although that's free, the constraints, and then there's some parameters, right? It explains how things are calculated. This is the wind rose that's used. And then these are the three different cases um, that are studying the problem. Um, there is some Python code so that you can run this. It's already ready to go. You don't have to do anything. You're, if you decide to translate into another language or you want to speed it up, there's some examples here so you can check that what you're getting is still correct um, for this model. So here's a YAML file, and this gives a position of a wind farm and the powers for all the different directions and then the total annual energy production, which is the objective. And there's a case here for uh, the 16, 36, and 64, the different numbers of turbines that we looked at. Um, so those are available, and those could be used as starting points, but they don't need to be. Uh, we also had people run this, and so you can go look at their results. Um, there's, uh, let's see, I think there's 12 participants. So you can see the different participants, their results for the different cases. Uh, so this is their final positions their powers, and so you can go look at those if you're interested. Um, and then finally, there's another YAML file that just defines the wind rows. That's used by the Python script. Okay, so let's jump back to the presentation here. Okay, uh, so here's some of those results. Um, this was from, uh, so at the time when I did this, there's only 10, I think we had a few more participants later. Uh, this is the 16 turbine case, and you can see there's a wide variety of results, kind of harkens back to the multimodality of this design space. And for the 64 case, again, you can see a wide variety of solutions. Um, here's a plot of some of these submissions, uh, comparing how much they increased in power as compared to the baseline, so bigger would be better. And this is really just to highlight that there was a range of solutions that were out there. This is not to say which was best because it's really hard to compare, right? Because everyone had different hardware, different methods, um, ran for different amount of time. So uh, in some sense, this is an exercise in how patient you are in running these things. But uh, it gives you some idea of things to start looking at and compare against. And you can start with maybe some of these better uh, solutions and see how, how much you can improve on them. Okay, so that's case study one. Uh, there's two more case studies that we've been working on more recently, case studies three and four. Case study two, as I mentioned, was one that was just uh, more of a physics modeling, so less relevant to this discussion. Cases three and four are trying to increase the complexity of the problem. So while that one was a very simple boundary geometry um, and a very uh, coarse number of wind directions, try to increase that here. Case study three looks at um, this region here uh, this is a this wind farm here is kind of based off the, the borsela uh, wind farm is a simplification of it but this is more or less what it looks like there's these different parcels um, the dashed area was sort of the blue and yellow in the bottom right case study three focuses on just that region so it's still one continuous region but it has a more interesting shape it's not just a circle it's a little more complex it's not convex so it's a little bit harder especially for some of gradient based methods which our lab uses, um, uh, and so it's just focused on that one. Case study four uh, is looking at this entire farm here. So there's five different sections where the wind turbines can go. You can place them anywhere. Um, they can't go you know, outside of those regions, so they could go from one to the other. Um, they still interact with one another. Uh, so even though they're separate regions, you can't or at least shouldn't optimize them separately because the wakes uh, from the different parcels will still interact. They're still close enough. There's a lot of wake interaction. So this is a much harder problem, especially for the gradient-based methods. Um, 
because we have these sort of discrete regions and we have to decide how we deal with that. Um, the problem details are a little more complicated. So in this case, we have uncertainty, not just in wind direction, but in also in wind speed. So on the left, you can see that there's a, a lot more directions or we've got a finer discretization. And each direction also has a wind speed distribution. So for a given direction, you can see on the right, there's a distribution of wind speeds instead of just having a constant speed. So it's getting a little more realistic. And so uh, the objective, here is a double summation, at least in a simple, you can think of other, there's many ways you can do this forward propagation by just using a very simple um, you know, rectangle rule in terms of a quadrature method. We could do uh, uh, for each direction I, um, we sum for each speed uh, J, and then we calculate the power for that direction and speed, right? So this is a bit more computationally complex, uh, but still builds on some of those same ideas. Um, we're going to jump back now to that same website so I can show you where that's located. Uh, let's go. Okay, so if we go back to the same repository, there's another folder for case studies three and four. Same kind of deal here. There's a, a PDF that summarizes and explains in more detail what's going on. Um, talks about the constraints, which are really more or less the same, except for these new kind of boundaries that are a little more complicated. The base wind turbine is a little bit different. Um, and of course, the wind speeds and, and is a little more complex. You don't have to worry about any of this reporting. Uh, this sort of competition aspect of it is, is finished but uh, for both of these sets. But these are really here for reference and for comparison. Same kind of idea, there's some YAML files and a Python implementation, so you can go ahead and test these on your, uh, on, on your own and see how well you can do. Um, if you'd like to get involved, uh, you can contact us and we can uh, share more details. So this is an ongoing thing. Um, we have other case studies in the works. Three and four, we finished, the, so one and two, we uh, actually published a paper on this. Um, you know what, I didn't link that here, so let me just jump to that real quick. Sorry for all the back and forth. Go to our publications page here. This is the BYU Flow Lab thing that I was linking to. So here's this PDF, search for Nick Baker. Um, I showed some of those results on how they're different uh, results from case study one and two, and they're detailed here in this uh, paper, some of the numbers that we got. Uh, some different conclusions. Here's some of those figures that I showed, uh, but a lot more detail here if you're interested. Um, here's this title if you want to look at it. Uh, maybe a bit too bold of a title. I'm not sure these are the best practices, but this is kind of the direction we're working towards um, with these case studies to kind of understand different ways that people work on these, solve these problems. So case study one, as I mentioned, was pretty simple. We published a paper on that. Three and four, um, we've had some initial results and we've got a team of folks together on the IEA task working uh, to refine that and put out a paper. Um, and we've got ongoing discussions to start uh, case studies five and or six, not or, maybe five and six, um, to add uh, additional complexity. So if you'd like more information or you'd like to get involved, you can find our contact information at flow.byu.edu. And that website at the bottom is where you can find these specific case studies. Thank you and have a good day.